some Guy Lussac um, theory in a previous video, okay? Now we're gonna jump into some calculations, right? Now we agreed, right? The combined gas law, we always had to start with that and work backwards. And we also determined, right, that Guy Lussac, right? Um, the experiments were done at constant, okay, volume. All right, constant volume. Now, this problem right here, a rigid container, you stop there for a second. Anytime you hear the words rigid or fixed, okay, they're telling you that the, whatever that variable is, it's constant, it's not moving, it's not changing, okay? So the container has constant volume, okay, no problem. It's at 110 degrees C, all right? So automatically, we know that's our starting temperature. That's gonna be our T1, okay? Now once again, guys, do we use it as degree C? Answer is no, right? So we're gonna add 273 to 100 and, um, oh goodness. We're gonna add 273 to 110, right? So 273 plus 100, that's 373, and 10 more, that's 383, right? So our T1 is 383. Elvin. Okay, bam, done. Moving on. Now, when heated to 300 degrees C, so once again now, this is our T2. We're always labeling our variables properly before we jump into any type of calculation that cuts down on mistakes immensely, all right? So we got 273 plus 300, that's going to give us 573. Remember, we always want to work in what? We always want to work in Kelvin temperature, okay, when we're dealing with, um, you know, temperature. Always Kelvin. All right. The pressure was 422. So when it was heated, it turned to 422, all right? So this, I got to be careful, this is our P2, okay? Initially, it was at 110. It went to 300. It turned to 422, all right? What was the initial pressure? What was the starting pressure, all right? So we are looking for P1. All right, P1 is our X. So P1 is our question mark, okay? So we got it all mapped out. We got it all labeled. Now what we have to do is use the um, Guy Lussac equation properly, get our answer, we're good to go. All right, so what do we do? We have, let's go from the beginning, P1. V1, right, over T1 equals to P2, V2 over T2, right? Okay, now we agree for Guy Lussac that volume's constant, so the volumes turn to one, all right, we'll go away. Now we have P1 over T1 equals to P2 over T2. I always, like I said before, I always like to cross, crisscross the um, temperatures, all right? So what do we get? We get P1, T2 equals to P2, T1, okay? This T1 goes over there, this T2 goes over there, cross multiply properly, right? Okay, so what's next, guys? We are looking for what? We are looking for P1, this is our question mark, right? All right, so we put an imaginary box around the P1, that's the guy we're gonna isolate, yes? Okay, how do we isolate? We divide both sides, okay? by whatever variable is next, okay? It's the guy that we want, that we desire. So, we wanna isolate P1. What's next to P1 is T2. So we're gonna divide both sides by T2, okay? So bam, T2 goes there, and T2 goes there. Alrighty? Now what happens to these T2s? Okay, let me see if you guys can see. These T2s right here, they get canceled out. Bam, and bam, they're gone. So now we have successfully isolated P1 by itself, P1 is going to be equal to P2, T1 over T2. Now we're going to carefully place the values for these variables in. We got our answer. We're good to go. All right. So what's P2? Okay. P2 is 422 kPa. All right. Bam. So 422 kPa right there. Always, always try to use units, people. Okay. Because once again, as I said before, if they don't cancel properly, you get a strange unit or a strange answer. You can fix it, but if you put random numbers down, you know, it's going to be tricky. All right. T1 is our initial temperature. T1 over there is 383. Okay, so 383 will go there. Bam. 383 Kelvin. All right. So we got 
Kunsu is our second or final pressure. Uh, T1 initial temperature is 383. Our T2 goes in the bottom, okay? So we see our T2 is going to be 573 Kelvin. We're always working at Kelvin temperature, right? So 573 Kelvin goes there, okay? Kelvin in the top, Kelvin in the bottom, they cancel, okay? We're happy. Why are we happy? Because we're looking for pressure and kPa, kilopascals, is the unit of pressure. We're good to go, all right? So now we have to calculate, right? No problem. So, it's 422, okay, times 383, all right? Let's do that. I'm gonna divide that by 573. Divided by 573, okay, equals to that, 282.1 approximately. I'll do it one more time, just to make sure. 422 times 383, okay, equals to that, divided by 573, okay? And yes, 282.1 approximately. All right, so 282.1 kPa is approximately our answer, okay? All righty. So, we ask ourselves, guys, before we finish, does our answer make sense, okay? <coughs> we heated up our, our gas, right? It, the final pressure was 422, yes? Okay, so if we heated up and the final pressure was 422, do you expect the initial starting pressure to be higher or lower, okay? Now, we heated it up, it went to 422, we're thinking that the initial pressure P1 should be lower, so we're happy with this answer. Okay, guys, so always know the theory so that can help you to make sure if the answer makes sense or not. Okay, no problem. Let's do one more real quick. All right. Okay, now we're doing this problem right here. A gas, right, has a pressure of 520 mmHg, 520 mmHg. Now, millimeters mercury mmHg is an older unit. It's sometimes on a region, sometimes not, okay? I like my students to know it anyway, okay? Because the one atmosphere is kPa, uh, 101.3 kPa, that's on table um, A, right? Okay? But this mmHg is not, okay? But make note that 760, 760 mmHg represents standard pressure, okay, also, all righty? So we make note of that, and also 760 TOR, I'll write that down, 760 TORR, -R, all right? So just remember the number 760, okay, if you're using the older units of uh, pressure, and you're good to go. All right, no problem. So, it has a pressure of 520 mmHg, so what do you think um, that variable is gonna be, okay? Starting at this guy right here. So this would be our what? Our P1, that's our initial pressure, right? Okay, we read on. Okay, it's at 30 degrees C, okay? So that's gonna be our T1, okay? Now remember, we don't use Celsius, yes? We're gonna convert it to Kelvin. So 273 plus 30, right? If I'm not mistaken, that's gonna be 303. All right, Kelvin, then. Now, what is the pressure at STP? Now be very, very, very careful, folks. Anytime they tell you STP and doing gas law calculation, sometimes students don't see that or realize there are numbers involved here, okay? So what's happening? Standard temperature, right? Okay, standard temperature is zero degrees C or 273 Kelvin, right? Okay? And standard pressure, as we said before, is 760. Alrighty. So, we're looking at the problem right here. A gas has a pressure, right, of 520, that's our P1, and this is our T1. What's the pressure at STP? Alrighty. So, our temperature is going to be 273 now. That's going to be our new temperature. Alrighty? So let's check it out. P1 is 
B1 over T1 equals to P2 V2 over T2. Alrighty. Divisac, constant volume. The volumes disappear, so they get rid of them. They turn to ones and they go away. All right, what do we do next? What's the next step? We cross our temperatures, okay? So we're gonna get P1 T2 equals to P2 T1, okay? Are you guys with me? All right, no problem. What are we trying to isolate? We are trying to isolate pressure, guys. We're trying to figure out pressure, yes? Okay, all righty. And that's pressure two, okay? Because we increased our temperature, right? So we went from initial pressure here, okay, to the final pressure here. All right, so let's, 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 let's set this up. Okay, so there's the pressure P1, temperature T1, what's the pressure STP? So we're looking for our P2. So then, that's our P2, okay, that we're looking for. How do we isolate P2? Bam, bam, whatever's next to it, we're gonna divide both sides by that. T1 right here, T1 right there. T1 is next to this, we want this, so this guy divides both sides. The T1s get canceled out. Okay, we're almost there. Alrighty, so what's our pressure one? What's our starting pressure, okay? Look at our problem carefully, okay? Our pressure one is 520 mmHg, the big 520. M, M, H, G there, take a breath. What's our T2? Okay, our T2 now, guys, is from the STP um, information over here, right? Which we're gonna use 273 Kelvin, right? So 273 Kelvin, bam, goes there. Take a breath. What's our T1 initial temperature? Initial temperature was 303, okay? So 303, okay, goes in the bottom. 303 Kelvin goes in the bottom. Now guys, while you're calculating your thinking, right? If you're going from 303 to 273, right? Okay, the temperature is going down, yes or no? So if temperature and pressure have a direct and proportional relationship, right? What do you expect to happen to pressure if you're essentially cooling or lowering the temperature of the gas, okay? Hopefully you would expect that the pressure of the gas would also decrease, right? Okay, so think about it, okay? That a direct and proportional relationship. We're lowering the temperature. We expect pressure to be also lower. So we expect our answer to be less than 520 when we calculate it, right? So always be intuitive and think, just don't, just don't calculate for the sake of calculating. Know the theory, all right, guys? Okay, so let's wrap it up. Got 520. Okay, times 273. Okay, that equals to that. And we divide by 303. Okay, what is that? 468.5. Okay? Alright, I'm gonna trust that answer. I never let it do it two times, but no problem. So the answer is 468.5 M M. It's less than our original pressure. Why does it make sense? Because the temperature is being is going down. We're cooling the gas system, right? So it makes sense that the pressure will go down because the gas particles are moving around with less, fre less frequency of collisions. No problem, less pressure. All right, guys, as always, hard work with sacrifice equals success. Know your variables, know your units. Set it up, okay, algebraically, isolate, you know, label your different units and your variables, okay? Don't just rush into calculating and you'll be okay. All right, take care.